Well, hello and welcome to GMRS Mower here with a little session of some empirical testing. So you have probably seen I discovered we can do we can basically build pneumatic um, sieves missiles, and that has some pros and it has some cons. Uh, and well, today we're just going to find out some decent little um, anti-missile missile sieve system and stuff like that. So, uh, to begin with, the, the game is a little bit slow speed. I'm just gonna spawn my regular missile sieve system here. So we can kind of check it out a little bit. Um, here we have my regular missile sieves. Um, we have an all-in-one local weapon controller here. Um, or local weapon uh, sieves controller rather. Uh, and it has a range of 100 to, 100 to 600 meters. Um, they are ejected, get a launch speed of 70 meters per second. And now my entire fleet of different shells are coming in here. So let's just dive here and see a little bit what we're doing. <laughs> I found something pretty funny, which I'm going to show you pretty soon. Uh, however, yeah, it's really weird. There we can see, there we have a turning thruster only. I'm starting to like that model a little bit, actually. And there we have a... yeah, it's dead, of course. But in any case, um, this is my old missile sieve system. It's pretty good, it's pretty good, but um, it has one problem. And one problem with my missile sieve systems is that this type of uh, missile sieves will go to kill the enemy decoys. And of course it has a thrust duration of 15 seconds, a lifetime of 20. It should have time to reach their variable thruster just like this fence APN guidance missile interceptor. Simple like that. This one prefers the controller target and not the general coordination. And that's because I found out that when we are aiming the missiles towards the enemy, uh, it seems to be nice to actually make the missiles go for the target which have been selected by the local uh, the, the uh, sieves controller. Because otherwise they might uh, try to hit a shot in another direction than we are aiming at and that might be wasted. So then it's better to have several thirds. Yeah, in any case, um, a pro with this um, missile sieves is that it has long range but that also makes us vulnerable to get sh to, to, to get confused by decoys so my intention of this is to make another system that's more powerful and has faster reload uh, this one reloads every 14.1 seconds now here we have large gantries uh, back in the day you could have large uh, interceptors i think um, I think, it, or I'm misremembering, uh, but in any case, that's not the case anymore. So we only have small and medium systems to work with. Right, um, so I have made some different uh, setups here. Here you can see this, these uh, ones launch speed is 400 meters per second. And that's so weird. You can see here, now it's 300 meters per second. Yeah, okay, so this is a small system. We can't make him shorter than this. Or actually, can't we? Let's check here. Small gantry launcher. I think it's still gonna be... Uh, yeah, it's still gonna be four modules. We can't have two. Yeah, so anyways, uh, the... Uh, the small missile has four in one, just like this. Uh, four modules per missile, that's the minimum size we can have. You can see we have a reload time of uh, 10 seconds, yeah, uh, which is nice. But um, <laughs> you can see the damage done to small, medium, large and huge missiles is uh, 350 to 1400. And when we compare this to medium missiles, it's just much different. Um, but anyways, I'm going to keep one thing. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna speak about one thing at a time. So what I was looking at here is that the missile interceptor has a launch speed, and you can see we have a launch speed of 300 meter, meters per second, and this one has a launch speed of 400 meters per second. And I'm like, why? 
Okay, so what, what, what's the difference here? Here we have a short range thruster and we have a fuel tank. And that makes a lot of sense, you know, that this one is a little bit faster, that this one uh, will shoot out the missiles faster. They have short range thrusters. Thing is, if we just change this to a short range thruster, short range thruster, excuse my speech, uh, you can see we have a thrust duration of zero seconds. This means we won't have any acceleration. Let's actually pause here. Now you can see we fired. And this one is powered. We're going to, and there we can see. You can see this, this one has a really, really big launch time, yeah? This has a really, really powerful uh, launch speed. Even though it's not powered, even though it has no fuel, uh, the mere presence of a short range thruster apparently gives this a um, launch speed of 400 meters per second. So this one has uh, a short range thruster and no fuel, and this one has a short range thruster and fuel, which means that this one um, with no fuel is deaccelerating since launch but the presence of the short range thruster makes it so that it actually uh, um, that it actually uh, like is faster even though it shouldn't it's so weird uh, and if we instead have a say um, a variable thruster we get a little bonus 340 meters per second even though we have no fuel even if we have a torpedo propeller we get uh, 50 meters per second extra uh, launch speed. I didn't know that, I think it's super strange. Now we're back to 400 with the short one. We can switch to uh, switch to fence instead. You can see it's now 300. Yeah, so that's, that's some weird shenanigans. However, uh, while I'm really keen with this uh, system, actually I'm thinking that we should even have a turning thruster here. Set the activation delay to zero. Uh, make it maneuver everything if it wants to. You can see that we can have a pretty big turn rate now. We should absolutely hit every time. Um, yeah. But that's weird. That's weird. Uh, since, we, since we have some... Uh, of that anyways okay so let's follow this thing this is like powered to hit it should it should like hit every time I don't know if any of the systems actually missed but uh, I don't think these ones missed yeah okay that's my normal ones aren't they I think so in any case um, one thing I'm a little bit thinking about here, now we're gonna go back to big speed because it's fast, and that's the damage of these things. Uh, so we have damage to small, medium. Of course they will take it out, but I don't know how much damage it does to cram. So 280 to 560. This has a damage to cram that goes up to 4000. Um, and if we just compare a little bit here, we can see the small missile launcher costs 800. And a medium missile launcher, we need one gantry at least. So we're basically going to do a little calculation here. Um, if we're having a four module setup like this, we will pay, let's see here, 60... 200 200 so 600 200 200 which basically means we land at uh, well thousand thousand in materials on the other hand this small launcher costs 800 and now we get four missiles so if we select the largest amount of damage it can deal according to these stats now in From the Depth we shouldn't care about stats all the time, we should actually care more a little bit about uh, in-game performance. But usually the in-game stats and the game performance are the same thing. However, unfortunately not always, which is why some people get stuck at the math 
and you and build things that they all aren't like optimal in the real world, even though they should be. So, anyways, uh, 560 times four. So this is the combined damage we can deal to one cram. Uh, and if we divide that value by the cost of it, which is 800, we get a sort of damage per material cost of uh, 2.8, yeah? If we go to this system, we can see we have... Uh, or no, uh, actually... Actually, we're going to compare it to this system because that's more makes more sense. Because we also need to take a reload time in account. This takes 10 seconds and a um, one gantry, uh, like a mini system of, uh, uh, of missiles, uh, this will land us at a cost of 800. Same as uh, the small launcher. Uh, and this would give us a damage. You can see it's uh, it goes up to 4000. So yeah, that's 4,000 divided by 800. So that will land us at five. Uh, so while if, if we have this small system, uh, damage per materials spent on making the uh, civ system, uh, then like this is, it's not twice as good, but close to. So when seeing this value, damage to these as well as damage to like crams between medium and, and large, I'm kind of feeling like that we have to use medium gantries uh, as our base for uh, civ systems because it doesn't make sense to use the small ones unless we have to because we're on an airplane and we're really, we, we need really small. Um, it feels that having one of these will make it yeah, much better actually. So, anyways, I think we're gonna we're gonna remove this. I'm gonna check these uh, stats here a little bit, but uh, yeah, I think we can we can remove my original turret here and just check out the system. So now we know uh, there is one extra little caveat thing here. Now we should look at these systems here. Here we can see we have a launch speed of two hundred meters per second. And here we have a launch speed of 300 meters per second. And that's because I added a short range thruster. And if I add a short range thruster here, even though we have no uh, fuel, the short range thruster makes it so that the launch speed is suddenly 300. Um, and we can actually check that that's true even. So these ones actually launch with 100 meters per second faster speed, um, which is pretty cool but I don't kind of, yeah, it's probably also good to minimize the amount of objects we have in air and I want a pretty heavy duty system. So we're actually going to scrap uh, this system here. I do, however, want to see how they are doing against this thing if we are turning this off. Let's see here, channel off. We're gonna reload you are you kidding me <laughs> all right I think we're gonna we're gonna increase oh no receiving no mainframe connection did oh no 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 you should be off you should be off I'm sorry okay, there we go uh, this rule set probably longer we're gonna max the uh, number of areas we can actually aim at and we're going to reload this cram here come on it will fire soon and if we just check here a little bit short range thruster here we go very nice And perhaps we need to speed up a little bit. I can't see when this will fire. There we go. It fired. So here we can see they come in pretty quick, yeah? And you can see they do fragments, but man, they're not taking this thing out. They're only like assisting. So I'm thinking based on the data here, we can probably scrap this system here. Um, 
let's actually let's actually compare with this system here. So the, what we what we want to do in this video, it's of course to find a sieve solution that's a little bit more superior. And let's see here if we need to. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we'll follow this cram shell here. Bam. Next one comes there. That one. Okay, yeah. This one is a little bit more expensive though, should be said. So if we remove this, I don't think it would be able to take it out either. And this is a system that's more expensive. So, so yeah. Hmm. Not a completely fair comparison. But... Let's see here if we can make sure it's loaded like that. They are loaded. Can you load? And they kind of shot at it immediately, huh? Yeah, well, anyways. We put this back here. We gave it another launcher so it has the, the full deal. Oh. Cool, okay, okay. We're gonna slow down time. Actually, we're, we're not gonna do that. We're going to wait for... Actually, we're, oh no, oh no. Okay, there we are. Where are we? Okay. Right, so we have three launchers and it does get through. Okay, good. So... Um, if we go back to this system here, and we're gonna do like this. And now I actually changed my minder because I don't want to remove these setups I already have. So let's, let's, uh, the damage is the same. That's something that you should keep in mind if you haven't seen the last video. When we're doing, um, Civs missiles, you can see that the damage of this longer one is higher and the damage of this small one is this, is like high the same this smaller one this longer one the same doesn't matter how many high explosive warheads how many fragments you add they won't deal damage to incoming projectiles so it doesn't matter so yeah we should now probably wait for it to there we go I hope they had time to reload though. Oh god, that's not too good, is it? Oh, I turned it off. Oh my god. So, <laughs> we of course need to recheck that. Right. You are. No. Come on. One. Thank you. And reload, and yeah, it can take it out. So, um, now we know that it takes it out indeed. Let's see if it will reload in time. Because it's gonna have a cooldown, of course, when it's not packing. I just wanna see them in action a little bit. Now it's coming up too far again, isn't it? Oh yeah, there we go. And there it went. Yeah, okay. So we can conclude that the damage done by uh, three medium ones is higher, is much considerably much higher than the damage done by uh, three small ones. So that is basically a little conclusion that uh, we had to get here. Right. Oh yeah, it takes it out really fast, it's super good. So, what do we have here? Uh, I don't remember if we checked them up. Now, this one is uh, super, super small. Uh, it's only like one module like this. It's, it's, we paused the timer, it's super nice. Uh, it's like one gantry and one launcher, which makes the reload time go down to 10 seconds only. 
And this is the way I'm kind of thinking we want to do it on. I would also want to experiment a little bit with having a short range thruster here because that increases our launch speed to 300 meters per second. It looks really stupid and it doesn't have any fuel, but whatever. Here we have a turning thruster, fuel tank, a missile interceptor, and this of course has a longer uh, reload time. It has a really short thrust duration, uh, but it should be extremely maneuverable. This one is basically a more maneuverable version of the smaller sheep one. I don't think it's worth it to have this added uh, size. It of course has a really big turn rate um, and it has a good launch speed, but it's uh, it's only, it's like Fox powered like the other one. So I'm thinking we should just, uh, we need to be like really slow here. You can see it fires and they are already, <laughs> we're just paused the game instantly and they're already so far. So this thing, it's gonna be interesting. I wanna see if this misses. This one must hit and this one should hit too. So of course this powered one is really like quick. It should really uh, hit the target. Okay, and there we can see, bam, hit. This one, it tried to hit, but I think it actually uh, missed its mark. It was kind of close to the missile, but that's a little bit scary. Um, I think I think that's maybe not, uh, maybe not exactly what we want here. You can see this one is reloaded in, bam, and then we have these ones there. One thing I do want to try, whoops, let's copy, come on. Okay, we're, we're copying it to the other launch uh, pads so we can kind of see. <clears throat> now this is probably a really bad setup, but let's, let's try it nonetheless. If we may. And there we go, slow motion. And there they come, oh my god. Ah, they actually got him. They actually did get him. So this is not a too bad system, to be honest. It's acceptable. I think it's it feels a little bit risky not having them be able to move towards the target in any way. Because I do kind of feel like that um, even though we kill this in one little swarm here, this is a Marauder gun after all, and we're basically having the best opportunities to hit it at, and they are not coming in at a perpendicular motion or anything like that. So it's more or less by luck. It feels like this could be a missile based flak gun. But again, 300 meters per second, that's a pretty decent launch speed. And of course I have max of these, and if I had less, it would be not so fast. If we instead change this to fence, copy to all, I think we're gonna have slightly nicer results. There we go. You can see they are much more in control. Damn, but that one went really off. Why did it do that? Well, now I'm not sure I actually got time to reload them. Oh yes, we did. So this is the really nice thing when we are actually having <laughs> these ones um, that are the tiniest size. Now you can see it's diving down. Why is it getting launched so much higher? Do we have something weird going on here? Ejection elevation, nothing weird going on here. All right, um, I think we might need to change this to prefer Civs controller target at launch time and copy to all of them.
Okay. And then we can probably check out here. Huh. We need to watch that a little bit more in slow motion to see what happens. And let's see her coming in a shot. Maybe not. Are you gonna are you searching you're changing targets, I see. Oh yeah, now three, two, one, fire. Well wanna see that again. So one thing for that. And I'm not sure if it's trying to change targets again or something like that. I tried to pause it last time and I just clicked the wrong button, so that was a miss. I wonder if I pause. Oh yeah, that's cool. Nice. So we can we can go to full speed and just uh, see when it like that then we can go to minimum speed and yes we are at slowest speed again that's really good so now we can see the flight pattern a little bit better it's like they are arcing they are arcing a little bit not saying that's a bad thing because they are kind of trying to dive down again but damn that's that's far off and what are you doing man somehow the other mode was a little bit better for these ones that are kind of... Uh, uh, these ones, these missiles uh, that are um, like not powered, that are only inertia based. Okay, so coordinate between interceptors to avoid overkills and bad targets seems to be possibly a better arc somehow now we can see them again and they are point on all right then yeah i don't know what happened with that arc there it it feels like it should be no difference um I'm actually like thinking that might have just been a little fluke. Let's prefer the Civs target again at launch. And just pause here and see what happens. This one is on point. This one is trying to dive up. It felt like it got launched too early. Like we got him, but I don't know. I'm kind of suspecting it doesn't matter so much, but who knows. I'm thinking it's more when we have multiple targets, we will notice any type of difference. Because again, we are actually getting it. We are actually getting it, but it's some... It's in some way the launch angle. You can see this one is overarching. They were pretty point on though, weren't they? Let's see if we can find a difference here. Missile interceptor, coordinate, copy, and yeah, load crams. Very similar, very similar. Yeah, we'll need to test that against uh, multiple targets to even get a conclusion from that. If we're gonna build the type of powered missile, we need to make sure we have a short range thruster with zero delay, a turning thruster and drag down the delay. Um, I don't know, missile editor. Yeah, I don't think that ca that matters. Uh, fuel, I like that, missile interceptor, okay. 
So now we can copy this type of system and we have a long reload time of 14 seconds. Uh, but we should be able to engage the uh, targets at a longer distance. So, yeah, we can see it it comes up there in, 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 at a little longer distance. But of course, we lose kind of four seconds of uh, continuous firepower, which, which ain't great, is it? Indeed. We can see they really they really coming very close here. So they're kind of launched and yeah, they're kind of powerful. So, uh, so far I have concluded that it is worth it to only go with medium ones in almost all cases. Um, if we're using this uh, launch method I'm wondering if we're having a short range thruster anyways. Oh, the launch speed goes down to 100 meters per second. If we're gonna use short range thrusters, we need ejectors nonetheless. But uh, both of these systems have the same pros and that's that they are close range. Which means we won't target, we, we won't target enemies that are uh, like further away really. Now in any case, let's see here, max speed at, max speed, why do they have the same max speed at zero meters? Well, they are powered. This will be kind of interesting, we need to, we need to check out here. So d there is a delay. Man, but their speed doesn't matter. Their, their speed is the same. If we remove this stagger here, we need to check if it's even worth it to have uh, ejectors. No, not that thing. Repair all in case, just in case. We're gonna drag down the speed a little bit to just reload that cram cannon over there. Okay. We can probably speed up time here. Oh. Come on. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> we drag down speed to the slowest one. And here they come. Here they come. All are launched at the same time. Right. So, as for now, this missile has already reached this step. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, yeah. The, uh, the, the missiles with eject, uh, the, the pads with ejectors almost will reach the target twice as fast as the one without. But you can see there we have one detonation area. Here we have another detonation area. And you can see the difference here. It's not big, it's really not big. So I'm kind of, to the best of my ability, I will say that this added cost of, what is it, uh, 200, as well as the added space, doesn't really make up for, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't really, it's not worth it. The detonation difference is kinda, not not big enough okay well we're going to we're going to remove this and we're just going to make sure that we actually were able to take out the cram shot even though uh, we have this type of setup all right now we didn't have time to reload did we No problem. Yeah, and it's still it's still a good bit away. It's still a good bit away. So, as for powered systems, I think we can do a short range thruster with a turning thruster, with a fuel tank, and with a missile interceptor. Now, I'm not entirely sure we even need to have a turning thruster. Um, I think we might as well get away with having fins. We're gonna have fins 
on two of them. It's really point blank too, so that makes it a little weird. Okay, we're gonna stalk them here. We can see the one on the right is the turning thruster. And due to its area of uh, being, they actually hit a little bit better with the fins. Just make sure this has a, because on the turning thruster, if it has a delay on getting active, you might get a problem. Turn rate with thrusters, 79 meters per, 79 degrees per second. Uh, turning is uh, 27 degrees per second. One thing I really want to test, that is what happens if we have this system but a VLM. So I'm going to build that. So we're gonna set it up, short range thruster like this. We're gonna go with uh, turning thruster, zero activation delay, uh, maximum fuel percentage use, copper to matching launch pads. And we're gonna see, we're gonna see. What happens if we get an incoming shot with this? I'm kind of, I'm very surprised if it actually manages to turn. Ooh, one thing I do wonder, I will want to do this. Let me just slow down time a little bit here. What happens if we do one turns on this things? Um, so we have a very short aim down distance thing. Maybe just, maybe like 10 meters or whatever. Let's check that. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, activation delay, okay. And what do we have here? We still have uh, the internal spay used for uh, used for fuel. Excuse me. Is the game paused? Oh yes, it is. We can do it on some of them there. Guidance. I don't think that matters for sibs for like anti-missile missiles, but I might be wrong. Let's turn this down to like zero there. And this thing, I'm gonna do like this. All right then. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have time to spawn there. They did not. So what happens if we... Uh, I think we can spawn a crossbones a little bit while away. We need to turn on god mood thing. What happened to you? <clears throat> there we go. It's a pretty big system. Oh, the AA needs to be offline. Okay. So here we have it. Uh, this, these are the ones with one turns. Three of them there. These are not one turned. And this one, uh, this one to the furthest left we removed activation delay but it's it's like no difference and they go out they go down in a straight arc like that completely useless just becomes useless instantly okay, good to know and they of course has a decent like reload time here so that's not too good what i do think we need i do think we need to uh, Go here and let's see here. We can't have the game paused, can we? So, uh, I'm thinking that a short range thruster needs to delay 0 0.1 seconds at least before it launches. Let's see here. Otherwise, we might have. 
Maybe actually a little bit more. 0 0.3. You're gonna be 0 0.1. 2. 1, 2, 3. Okay, good. Now another volley comes in here. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens here. See when they detect them. And they are launched. They are indeed launched. Okay. We're gonna pause and we're gonna go there. Of course, these go straight against it. They are the powered ones. Here we have. Ooh, look at that. So this is the one to. This is the third one, yeah? And that means the, the the maximum delay. And the maximum delay actually has the sharpest angle towards the enemy. These three for the, the... Oh, look at that. Look at that. You can see they have a slight angular change. Okay, we need, we need to investigate here. And they had that the last time. I thought it was a mistake or it didn't matter so much. Warhead arming delay. Okay. Guidance activation delay 0 0.1 seconds. If we're gonna change this to 0 on the second one too, and we're gonna notice a difference with two of them being a little bit more sharp, shouldn't they? Okay. And they're flying in nice arcs here. These are going straight for the mark, powered as they are. Oh, and the turning thrusters, they're really trying to dig down. Interestingly enough, they get to a sharper dive there. But it's not quite enough. It's really not. So I think... Um, the short range thruster, we're rather gonna have this 0 0.5 and this 0 0.4, we're gonna see, because the 0 0.3 did the best job. Alright then. And I do suspect, ooh, one thing I'm kind of thinking about, that is what if we have, uh, what if we have un like, uh, what if we have the, the simple module, the uh, only the interceptor and the fin? What if we have it on a one axis turret? Can it work, I wonder? Okay, they go towards the enemy. Let's see here. They go up here, don't they? Now these go together. So the guidance activation delay actually matters for um, Sivs missiles. You can see it's much closer to reaching the mark than the other ones. And this one almost got there, but they're too slow. Interesting. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a really bad VLM system, that's for sure. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna up this. We're gonna say what about 0 0.6? Can let's say this is minimal. What happens what happens if we just increase this to something like that? Here we have let's see our turning thruster fuel tank. Well <clears throat> we're gonna note this the next little swarm coming in here and they are popping up there i think that's probably oh and this one oh look at that look at that isn't that quite beautiful they're aiming straight towards the target oh no they they were in the right direction and then something happened that's kind of interesting. It's really hard to make uh, these this type of setup. I am thinking that we can probably see which which method works best here. 
So if I'm going to set up what I think it will be, we're gonna have a start lay of 0 0.4, a turning thruster there, one turn 20 meters, guidance activation lay go down, something like that I think work. And I'm even thinking what if we have some type of like launch angle. We're gonna copy this to that, let's see here. Hmm. All right, so I set up something else and I'm thinking we might want to have a kind of launching angle, but I realized if we wanna have a launching angle, you can see they almost reached the mark now. They almost do it, but almost doesn't, uh, that's just not enough. One thing I do wanna try that is what happens if we're not slow down the time instead what happens if we select the uh like straight firing line for these two and for this we're gonna have default guidance for these two default guidance uh current missile forwards that was what i set up for this and the other ones are okay, good. Right. Now they, they are still having some type of uh, speed, okay. They really go upwards and man, they can't go down. Interesting. They kind of wear off to try and go back, nah. That just won't cut it. Just won't cut it. And now we just lose all the damage to the next incoming volley. Yeah, that won't work. That won't work. So, uh, the next thing, if we want to do this a VLM system, I'm thinking like this. What if we have um, elevation of like 90 degrees? Ejection elevation, 90 degrees. And I think maybe, maybe we just need to copy this to something like that. I think it should be fine. So what happens now then? Oh man, they're just a little bit too slow. Now they are reloaded. So the next kind of volley coming. We should be able to see something. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it's it's the elevation. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, they almost hit though. That was pretty cool. Yeah, okay. Uh, Ejection elevation, yeah. Not sure that's exactly what we want, but whatever. Um, what if the short range thruster delay goes up to something like this? What happens then? Thrust before locking. What happens if it's 18%? Make us uh, slow down like a lot. Ready to fire. Okay, next volley incoming. I don't know how they kind of retained... Whoa. What are we doing? Well, that's some angry missiles, that's for sure. Uh, it seems that these missiles kind of remember their elevation angle, even though we kind of removed... Um, the ejectors. Oh wow, some of them actually hit. So this is obviously a better system if we're going to have vertical launching uh, missiles like this, we probably want to one turn. But I think it might be excessive. No, I think you can see, oh my. We're, go we're gonna build a new system just to get rid of the old settings. It's just weird. Yeah. 
I think the vertical launch sieves uh, system, I'm, uh, I want to make one, but I think it will be the more long range method. We're gonna have variable thruster. We're gonna have fins uh, or turning thrusters, let's see here. I think probably turning thrusters. Uh, I've had better results with that before, but instead of uh, like APN guidance, I think I wanna go and try with uh, one turn here. So let's see here. Making it go 300 meters per second is probably enough. It gives us a long duration to actually hit them, no ramp up time. We should have a tiny start delay of 0 0.3, turning thruster also 0 0.3, one turn, maybe 70 meters is good. Uh, I think this is probably a good setup. We're gonna copy this and see how they, uh, what kind of results we can get. Now we can see, now they are going down, they are going down. And ah, they tried to save themselves, but oh, they dive up again, but no, they don't do anything. Well, well done. Okay. Want to see what type of movement? What? Oh, I were controlling them. Not good. And there we can see pretty fast up. Let's see here, why did they, oh, they are probably coordinating, there are no different settings on them. Okay, a few seconds more. What, I, I think I wanna do a little bit different setting here. I want to change the one turn to like 10, like 25. Oh, okay, 25, okay, 45. We're just gonna do some different numbers here. Maybe 65. We can go with like one turn, 120. We can have some bigger numbers here just to see. No, 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 one turn. 200 and have a big one there. Right, so where are you? You're all in the air trying to dive down in a sharp arc. Well, that won't do it. Of course, we'll need to set that up to actually target some things that are a little bit further away, of course. But right now we launch them at all the, we're gonna launch them all at the same time. Oh, look there. That's an interesting cluster. Bam! Got in there. Really sharp there. We can see the, the, the sharp angles. I actually think the sharp angles can have a better, better chance of hitting. Let's see here. If they get if they have chance to actually go for the proper. Ooh. Not really. Not really. I don't think, I don't think this is a good method, actually. I think maybe the, the good old APM guidance, just like this, is, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, screw one turns, that doesn't work. Oh man, that, 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 there we have some clear results, okay. Well, at least at the previous older systems I've made, there are APNs. See that diving down. Much bigger chance of actually hitting. Yeah. High gain doing like that. Missile interceptor, good turning thruster. I think we're not gonna have a delay, a delay on this. And we're gonna have the variable thruster. Start delay can be. Yeah, well, maybe it can be like 0 0.4 seconds or something. We're gonna do this now. Right. So, what results will be be getting here? Man, okay. Yeah, this is a different world. Maybe the APN is a little bit high. 
Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Almost the entire volley was taken out at like point blank distance. They were really launched at the last second and yeah, they could actually take him out. Look at that, look at that. And now they, okay, well, they messed up. Right, uh, no, no, I missed that, okay. Bam. If we set a little delay on this thing, I think we're, we're gonna be having some pretty decent results. Like that. Next volley coming in. Look at that. Very nice. Pretty cool. Okay. So, we actually have a VLM type system that works pretty well. VLM's uh, anti-missile missiles. Uh, I think the only thing that's basically, of course we can uh, like test around a little bit with different speeds and different uh, variable thruster activation delays. Um, so I think the turning thrusters has no delay. So we also have uh, APN guidance, but variable thruster, we're gonna test no delay. We're gonna test uh, tiny delay. We're gonna test uh, a little more delay. Wait, what, what did it do? This, this no delay. One, two. This one is one, two. This one is four. We're gonna have longer ones here then. Oh no, now I messed with that. So six. This is what we have to do sometimes in From the Depth, just test loads of different values like this really slow one there. Man, interesting. Okay, really interesting. So. Next volley, we'll see. We have uh, no delay to basically all of the delay. All right. So here we have no delay. It goes upwards very quickly. It, uh, it gains much higher altitude. And now it tries to dive down. Oh. Oh man, okay, okay, okay. So, the semi sharpest angles seem to be the best. And that one with the no activation delay actually missed. That's kind of interesting. I wanna try without the... Uh, without the... Uh, st staggered fire here. I guess that's gonna be next round. We need to be a little bit quick with a uh, pulse move. <clears throat> oh, maybe I should... Uh... Perfect. Ah, there we can see, here we can see the exact one. One, two, three, they are, they are kind of slow. They haven't activated yet, still haven't activated. Bam, they're all at track. One hasn't uh, started yet. It's rather falling down. Cool, so, so the sharpest one seems to be much better. I think this one is a little too high. Maybe like 0 0.8 is better. This one is 0 0.9, okay. This needs to be higher. In any case, 0. Point. Let's have it at one then. Right. So now let's see here. No, so basically no activation delay, some delay, some uh, like, uh, yeah. They go down like that. Bam. 
interesting. It's kind of hard to say which one of them is uh, superior in terms of getting the best angle. I'm thinking it will be easier to see at longer distance. Man, they kind of missed, didn't they? I'm thinking I want to line up it like this. So we better get a view on how it's working. It is clear we need some delay, that's for sure. But some of them really just go off into, into the abyss. What happens with those? All right, done. Bam, it's a pretty good one. So I'd say that a start delay of 0 0.4 seems to be around the optimal spot. Let's check again here. That's too slow. I think I think this is one. One, two, three, four. I think this one or the one below is the optimal. Uh, I think this one is the one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. And that's a thruster activation delay of 0.4. Okay, cool. Now we found out what's the best is here. So we're gonna copy this setting to all of the launch pads. And now there are different variables. So they might counteract each other. But now I just want to see in terms of APN guidance, I usually go with almost five. To me, it seems to be the best. But we're gonna try, we're gonna test some other values here uh, because for this application, it might not be best. So five, four, three, two, one, and like half. And this one for testing sake, just have it at minimal. Right then. We don't have any staggered fire add on either. I'll line it up. <clears throat> All right, there we have them. All right, they all move in one pattern. Why do they do that? APN is five, APN is four. Okay, who knows? Ooh. We're twitching around here and all of them uh, unfortunately fell down. That's not too good. Yeah, so this type of uh, anti-missile missile isn't of course great against crams. They will never be. But sometimes you will just not be able to fit a proper anti-missile missile, missile uh, turret. So that's why I want to develop a system like this. They're kind of over moving a little bit there, are they not? But they also get a sharper angle. You can see bam, yeah, yeah, bam. Seems like the valleys in the middle was a little bit better at actually reaching a hit. To me, it seems like that. Well, man, we won't be getting, we won't be hitting them, will we? Hmm. Having them spread out with a staggered fire, of course, helps greatly too. So that's, of course, something we have to keep in mind. Let's see here. This one is the most extreme. Yeah, it definitely hits. Some of the other kind of won't. 
So to me it seems that, as I suspect, 5, there's no real reason to not use 5. Yeah, well in any case, I think this can be a decent uh, anti-missile missile system. So I'm going to take this to further development. We're going to use a VLM type here. We're going to add a um, identify friend or foe and a staggered fire, of course. Let's see here. And with these values, I think it should be a decent system. So we can see they're they're trying to coordinate. Now we got a really like off sync launch. The closer they are, the worse it is for us. Except if you're using the pneumatics, then it's pretty good. Yeah, you can see while we didn't get all of those, uh, this is of course a, a, this is an expensive system, yes, but it's most likely very worth it if we compare to what it would cost to actually get hit by this barrage. We need to set up some limitations in the SIBS controller, but that's basically a that's 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 a conversation all of its own, like the best settings and the, the least CPU destroying ones. The good one with the VLM system is that yes, they are more expensive and they have a much lower hit rate, but they are so easy to armor and so easy to hide. So that's a big pro. Well, this is a system we're going to continue to develop. Um, turning thruster, variable thruster. Now we have this one. This is of course the powered missile interceptor. Um, or the one with the turning thruster. I don't really know if I believe in this, but I'm going to give it a shot since we know we don't need to have uh, any type of. Uh, we know we don't have. We don't need to have any type of uh, like launching things. What is it? Ejectors. Now they're spawning flares for me. Isn't that very very generous of it? So this one has fuel tanks and fins. This one has turning thrusters. This is this is the one I believe in a little bit more. We're gonna copy this one to all of them. And we'll see if they do anything. Now, this one we can remove so it doesn't actually fire. <clears throat> Now, I believe this could be a pretty decent uh, civs lo lo <laughs> little launcher thing. Man, they're quick. I think we need a staggered fire on this too. Otherwise, we're just gonna waste all of the shots. We can slap it on just for the fun of it. But man, they are really they are really quicker with some of that, but definitely okay. Hmm. We should probably make it go for clusters too. Man, it actually does a pretty good job at taking those out. I am a little bit concerned. The missile interceptor coordinate. What happens if we prefer the target we are shooting at? Man, that feels more straight, doesn't it? Let's see a few more volleys. So we, we I did set up some basic settings on this thing, uh, so it should target a little better targets. You can see here, main rule set, it's nothing complex, it's just some simple stuff. We can have it. <clears throat> I think this can be a pretty decent system, actually. Oh, yes. You saw that. That's really good. That's pretty good. And if we compare this to coordinate corporal launch pads, we're gonna see. We're gonna see what happens. Oh, they didn't reload yet. Oh, they did reload. 
I don't think we should be in here. We see the uh, we see the uh, computer's choice, not what the missiles are aiming for, because that's a mystery. Next volley. Oh, well, they work, but some of them missed. But with a slower delay, we wouldn't have m m noticed much difference either. So that's that. Let's see another volley. There we go. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, some just go through. And if we go to this thing, missile interceptor, preferences, target, not recommended. Let's see here. I wonder, it would be nice if there was some reload missiles quickly button. To my knowledge, there isn't. There is only that for APS and crams. Would be nice for lasers too. It seems to be pretty similar actually. But I think having them prefer the Civs controller's target will decrease the chance of a complete miss. Yeah, probably so. Since we don't want them to turn too much. We can do that for the VLMs, but not for the at target ones. And uh, one thing we should definitely go in here, and that's the main rule set, and that's weight and uh, clusters. Let's see here. Uh, cluster size. And if we have that, we can have uh, like that. And now I think it would be interesting to see the rules in action. If we kind of see, uh, that's bam, bam, bam. Wait, cluster. Bam. Very nice. Now they haven't reloaded, of course, but I'm thinking this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good indicator. They're, they are shooting them a little bit too quickly. It feels like uh, when they reach the target, it's already dead. For this, I think we need a slightly higher... Maybe not that slow. But if we have several, I think this might be a good speed, actually. We probably need to speed it up if it were a little bit slower. Of course, three more seconds. We're gonna we're gonna stalk one of them here. You're there, bam! Hit target, bam, bam! Hit targets, dan dan! Oh yes, very nice. Very very few of those uh, missiles did not hit its target. That's pretty nice. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think this is a expensive, good, but compact. Remember, this is like thousand each. One, two, three, four. <laughs> it's like 10k. Yeah, this is this. Yeah, it's not the cheap one. But I think it's pretty darn good. I will say that. <clears throat> Now, for pneumatic sieves, we should also try to build a system that's built via a one-axis turret. I think that could be pretty interesting to see how a system like that would look like. So, we're gonna have an all-in-one main rule set paste. We're gonna have the same as before, actually. I wanna go into this one and copy these rules because I want to go in this rules and paste them so we get that cluster prio which I think I set up in a decent way oh let's see here now we should now of course this is not like a real system I just want to make sure we have space <clears throat> for everything That. I think it's gonna be twitching very much because it's kind of wide. We're gonna have fins and we're going to have a missile interceptor. 
it's gonna be confused about where to aim, that's for sure. Nope. Something like that. What are you then? Copy. You can probably drag this down so we can fire very close as well. Okay. Here we have some pneumatic sieve system. It's really hard to see when they launch. And I do suspect we kind of need a staggered fire on this thing too. But again, now we have a reload time that's like 10 seconds. And we probably really need to pause to even see them because, well, the smoke reveals most of the missiles. There we go. And remember, these deal full damage towards them. Even though they're so small, they do contain the only component that matters. Because most of the stuff that's coming in at us is coming in at a pretty sharp angle. So, I think, of course, this won't be able to save us from any mortars or anything like that. But I think this might actually be a pretty decent um, pneumatic sieve system. Uh, and seeing as the uh, smaller, the small missiles won't help much, I think this might be a good way to go. Well, we're gonna drop down this thing here paste the rule set and uh, see if we are completely safe against incoming uh, stuff now. I don't think so. Hmm. So this is long range. Uh, this is probably even more long range, but very specific against cram. And this is kind of the sheep system that can really add some damage to them. One thing I do want to check, that's of course, how much damage do they actually, like how many of them miss? Bam. Basically none of them missed one missed seems like yeah so it's a, it's a, it seems to be a pretty good system i'm going to make more pneumatic sieves uh, <clears throat> i'm going to make a bigger system i really think uh, this type of setup as uh, tested can really uh, achieve something the small missile is faster base launch time uh, but I don't think it really uh, makes up for the lack of damage towards missiles. So we're gonna skip that and we're gonna go with mediums only. I'm actually most happy about this system. And well, this VLM system isn't half bad. It isn't half bad either because it's so compact. We can do something pretty good with it. In any case, for all of your uh, commissioned officers in the army of Jim Edison, thanks a lot for supporting. And uh, I updated the files before. Uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't put in these systems in yet because I need to complete them first. But all else uh, you've seen should be in there now. So you can check that out if you want to. And about that, huge thanks to the commissioned officers in the Army of Jimidism. Uh, Commander Ike de Boaster, Commander E. Jin, Lieutenant Hysteria, Powered by Greed, Tyler Russ, LTG Canyon, Vincent Veritas, and of course our... Uh, um, Stellar Jimodist LCG Canyon Saha in the Ecclesiarchy of Jimodism. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel, and I'll be seeing you next time. Thanks for watching the video, and if you did like it, remember to leave me a little like. Well, long video this, but I think we got some great results and we learned a lot of things, and I did at least, and hopefully you as well. So, to making better anti missile missiles. See you next time, or anti crime missiles. This is your host, Jimodism, signing out.